Hello, how are you? Hi, Allison. I'm great. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for being here on this special Community Voices episode for International Women's Day. I'm super excited to chat with you, and we seriously just couldn't think of anyone better to highlight for this episode, so I'm super excited um, to speak with you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Seriously, such an honor um, to be you know, representing uh, JD Sports with International Women's Day. It's such a special month, so I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, we love our partnership with you. Um, so to kick us off, I'll just kind of give you the floor to tell us a little bit more about yourself for those of you who might not know or might not follow you. And, you know, you nearly have a million followers on TikTok. So that's amazing and just thriving. And, you know, tell us a little bit about like what that journey has been like to get there and kind of how it all came to be. Yeah, sure. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer uh, Mika on TikTok, if you guys want to follow me. <laughs> um, I am a professional dancer, actor, performer based in New York City. I uh, am classically trained. I actually went to college for classical dance. I studied uh, creative advertising and classical dance. I moved to New York to be a classical dancer. I was actually kind of snobby when my friends were like, you have to download TikTok, it's the future of dance. And I was like, no, I'm a modern dancer. <laughs> when COVID hit, I started doing dances um, with my mom. And that's kind of what really skyrocketed my following. Um, I created a fan base, people loved my mom dancing. And then when I moved back to New York, um, I just kept making content. I'm, I'm pretty much known as the classical and hip hop dancer who dances on my roof. <laughs> uh, since then, I talk a little bit about living in New York. I'm really proud of my um, heritage. I'm half Japanese, half Norwegian. I love talking about it. And just what life is like being a dancer um, on and offline. I love that. That's so great. Yeah. I love how you one, you're like so positive to follow on TikTok, which like the world needs more of that. Um, but I love seriously, like when people just use their platform for, you know, doing good and like talking about topics that maybe are hard to hear um, or maybe just that people don't speak out about enough. Um, and I know you're a huge advocate for women's safety and speaking out on anti-Asian hate crimes, which has been you know, crazy, obviously, these last few years with everything that's gone on with the world. Um, I'd love for you to just kind of like speak to your involvement with those things for those who might not know and um, kind of like why those mean so much to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm pretty comfortable sharing this, but not many people know that last February, uh, I don't remember the date, it was specifically the last Wednesday of February 2021. I was walking home, not that late at night, and I was actually um, attacked and mugged by two men. Um, fortunately, I didn't have two serious injuries, but they did try to steal my purse. They stole my phone. It was really scary. Um, and so the next six months, I experienced, you know, forms of PTSD and um, anxiety, taking the subway, being outside. Um, but online, I was dancing and smiling. But behind the camera, I was suffering and trying to heal my anxiety and, and essentially my fear of the world. So I had a friend tell me like, Jennifer, you should post a TikTok about this. You should share your experience that this could have been a hate crime. And initially I denied it. I was like, I don't think it's a hate crime. I don't even know what it, they didn't technically yell a slur at me, but the more you learn about hate crimes, specifically Asian hate crimes, it's not necessarily, um, you know, a, a slur or, you know, it can be a really indirect attack. So once I shared it, that video went pretty viral. I posted an Instagram that got, you know, like 50, 60 shares about how to walk around safely. Um, and one year later, I have, um, I have been interviewed for magazines about this. I'm a huge, huge advocate for um, stopping Asian hate crime. I actually found my very first Asian therapist using the Asian Mental Health Collective program, which is on Instagram. Um, truly saved my 
saved my life physically, mentally, emotionally. And uh, a year later, I'm actually now staying in LA for the month. And I, I just reflect back, like, if Jennifer of February 2021 knew that she would be able to get through it and she could she could be happy again she she wouldn't be scared anymore she probably wouldn't believe it but I'm here to tell you if anything like that happens you will be okay and time really does heal all so huge huge advocate oh my gosh I love that story and I just think there's so much truth to that like whenever anyone's struggling you know anything but especially like with their mental health I think there's this hard, you know, hard area to not like to see the light at the end of the tunnel, like kind of as you were saying, like a year ago, you would have never thought about this. And I love that we reached out to you like a few months ago about this opportunity, because I feel like the timing just like the stars aligned and it's like a full circle moment for you. And I think that's just amazing that you're in such a better place mentally and able to like talk about, you know, such a hard time in your life now knowing that you're like on the other side of it. I couldn't agree more. Truly when um, I was reached out to about this, uh, I couldn't believe, I I knew I wanted to share almost like a one year look back at what had happened to me, but I didn't know how. And, And this is just such a perfect opportunity, not only to celebrate Asian women, but women in general this month and every month that, um, that we are so strong and physically, mentally, emotionally, emotionally, we are capable of finding happiness, of finding, you know, in in times of fear, how we can help each other. Um, At that time, I remember my friends pitched in money together and Venmoed me, I think it was like two or $300 so I could get a new phone. Um, I had a friend who walked me home um, after every night out, um, if I was just like in the city, uh, always, always walked me home or took the subway home with me. Um, a piece of advice I would give anyone watching this is that um, people will help you if if you just if you ask for it. You'd be surprised how many people are are there for you. So um, I'm really happy I spoke out about it. Um, I'm happy I reached out to a therapist about it. Um, and it's it's been such a great learning experience for me, um, having gone through it and knowing, unfortunately, how many people have gone through it, but how we can move forward, how we can be safe every single day, um, how we can combat um, hate crimes, Asian hate crime, women's safety every single day. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we talked about this um, before, but I think sometimes, unfortunately, with a lot of women, like our first instinct is like to compete with each other or, you know, just not support one another the way we should. And I love that you're, you know, just so positive about that and, you know, really uplifting other women and especially, you know, encouraging them to share their stories. Cause I think sometimes a lot of people, not just women, but women in general, they, they don't share their struggles. And then similar to you, the second they do, we realize how many other women have gone through the same issues or struggled with the same things. And it just is so much more powerful that way when we like connect over those things. Right. I I definitely, um, whether I'm consciously doing it or not, I definitely make sure on my platform, um, on this, on maybe at first glance, I seem like, you know, I look like a TikTok dancer. I do dances, but, um, I always want it to be a positive space. Um, I I have, you know, like a second account um, that's just for any of my followers who want to follow more like a vlog day to day. I talk about um, my experience as a dancer, especially in the dance world. It's so competitive, cutthroat. Um, People want to push each other down. I'd be lying if I didn't say I've been insecure and jealous. Uh, It's just the industry. But I am also a huge believer of karma. And when you put out good in the world, um, rest assured, you will, you will receive it. Um, So I I definitely, definitely believe in that um, competition between women, but, but working towards uh, uplifting each other. Yeah. And I also think too, just having like good role models for women and younger girls or young women, I think that's 
amazing. Like, did you have anyone, you know, growing up? That was a spare. <laughs> um, but did you have anyone, like, when you were growing up that you really looked up to and kind of, like, modeled after and, you know, that type of thing? Yeah. The most the most immediate answer I would go to is my mom. My mom is uh, a, she's fully Japanese. She is the most humble, uh, hardworking person I know. She was, she grew up in Japan and chose to join the Peace Corps in Sudan. Um, she lived a life of philanthropy. And when I was questioning whether to be a dancer, when I was going through my, you know, post attack experience, everything, she's just always been there to say, you know, go for it, take a chance on yourself, be strong. Um, most, most Asian moms, if not all moms, but specifically Asian moms might not come off as like emotional, you know, like physically hugging or like, you know, giving me words of affirmation necessarily. It's, it's in very like different ways. So my mom is a huge role model. Funny you say this too, because uh, I went to a convention that was specifically for Asian entrepreneurs. And the number of girls who looked like me, who came up to me to be like, thank you for being on TikTok. Like, thank you for being someone who looks just like me on this platform. And I, I just didn't even realize that, you know, there might be other Asian women or Asian girls who are looking at me and, and I, I could be a role model, which is incredible. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. One, I did not know that about that or about that you're with your mom. That's amazing. Like, yes. that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think representation is like seriously so, so, so important. And, you know, I think especially in industries like um, you know, like fashion and things like that, we're definitely getting, you know, we're moving the needle along. And I think we're realizing how important that is, especially for young girls to see, you know, women that look like them in, you know, movies and yes. all, magazines, all these different things. Like everyone should feel like they can find someone that looks like them to look up to. And so I think that's so cool that you've had like similar experiences like that. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And I, and I can only speak on behalf of being, you know, an Asian creator, but I have mutuals on <clears throat> TikTok who are black creators and, and they feel the same or, um, you know, like just people of all upbringings and backgrounds. I'm also just, I have a very uh, international background. I moved around a lot around the world growing up. It's, it's, it's something I love talking about um, on my TikTok. And I think, it's so interesting to learn about people's upbringings and, and why they are the way that they are. That's, it's just, it's just so interesting to me. So um, I'm glad I can use TikTok um, as a platform to do that, to, to chat about it, to make it an open conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So one last question for you again, since today is international women's day, what, um, you know, what do you think, you can, what's your goal, I guess, to continue to inspire women to like go after their dreams and their careers, regardless of what they are, you know, what they might be up against. And again, just, you know, any advice on how to like prioritize mental health through all of that? Oh, absolutely. Great question. <laughs> um, my immediate, my immediate piece of advice is um, for your career, jump and the net will appear. Like I am telling you, I never thought I'd be good enough to be a professional dancer. I actually went to a college um, not to study dance at first. I, I used to tell myself, I'm, I'm good, I'll never be good enough. And I think women, we do that. We're quick to submit ourselves to um, just not thinking, not, not thinking that we're good enough, but you'll never know until you take that leap, take that leap of faith. Um, I did end up taking the leap of faith to move to New York to dance professionally, to download TikTok. Right now, I, I'm here in LA. I'm going to be here for a month. I don't even have any plans, but I just, it just felt right. So leap and the net will appear. Um, in terms of women's safety, something I really, really prioritize, um, we can lean on each other. Um, I have, I kind of have a system where if I go out or if I'm out 
late at night. I have a texting system. I have find my friends. I, um, I'm in constant communication um, with my friends. So um, again, you can always ask for help um, and you know, like you can get help if you ask for it. Um, and then lastly, like I had said earlier, truly karma is a magical thing. The more you, the more good you put out, the more you'll receive. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I think. I've never heard that before. Jump and the net will appear. I love that. That's awesome. Right? I somewhat, I saw it recently a couple months ago and I can't stop thinking about it because um it's 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 become sort of my motto for this year. I also have a word that I think of that I choose for every year. And this year my word, it comes to me. So maybe Allison, you'll think of your word for this year. <laughs> but my, um, it's momentum. Like it just came to me. I was dancing one day and I felt the the word was momentum. I'm I'm not gonna let the only person who can really stop me from opportunities is myself. So um whoever's watching maybe think about your word for the year it'll come to you you don't have to think about it. it'll come to you amazing yes 2022 is gonna be your year yeah <laughs> well thank you so much for joining um us on this episode today like seriously was so excited to chat with you and you've just been nothing but amazing and um super excited too that we were able to partner and help um the organization that you spoke to the asian mental health collective super excited yes. to give back to them so they can continue, you know, to keep helping people um, like yourself. And yeah. Thank you so much. I, I, when I found out you, JD would be giving back, I honestly like teared up in that zoom because I couldn't believe that something that saved me last year, um, I can now, you know, give back to you or JD sports can give back to. So I really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you so much for chatting with me. Of course. We'll stay in touch. Okay. <laughs>